Welcome back to Yauk Outdoors. A viewer was asking if we can do a paddle tail tutorial. So in this video, we are gonna look at how to create the paddle tails in Fusion 360. And I will show you not one, not two, but three different methods for doing this. Let's get started. A paddle tail is usually referring to the tail of a swim bait that is somewhat flat, has the shape of a paddle, and can produce some kicking or wobbly action. Here we will not go into too much detail about how to create a swim bait body. We'll just uh, draw something up quickly so we can work on the paddle tail. For this swim bait body, basically we start out from a line, turn it into a pipe form, Add the symmetry, sculpt. And here is our basic swim bay body shape. The first method is to incorporate the paddle tail shape in the pipe form. And as you can see, this body already has some kind of a fat tail, but just without the flat surface that the paddle tail usually has in the end. So here we're gonna cut the excessive part of the paddle tail, and this will give us a flat surface. To cut it, first we draw a line and use that line to split body. Here I think the paddle is still too fat, so I went back and adjust the pipe form shape. In the timeline, double click the form icon, and those modify functions will become available, and we can start editing again. Now after the adjustment, we can see the paddle is very thin at the edge. So here let's give, uh, give the paddle some thickness using extrude. A little bit thicker. And finally we'll add a small fillet to smooth out the corners. There you have it. As you can see, the paddle has a very smooth transition into the body. And this is because we basically sculpted it when we create the swim bait body. If you like to make the paddle more pronounced from the tail itself, you can further adjust it by inserting new edges and then shape the tail with those new edges. So go to Modify, Insert Edge, and select multiple edges because I want to insert the edge for the whole cross section. And I want it to be inserted to the right of the existing edge. Drag that little left and right moving control so the new edges show up on the right. Click OK. Now we can modify the new edges. So first, let's uh, move this section closer to the end. And now I need to fix this part. Make it bigger. Move this part up a little bit. Turn a little bit more to the right. And move this part to the back. All right, looks good. Now we have formed the paddle more. Before it was a very smooth transition. Now we can see the paddle shape more. Because of the way we create the paddle, we don't really have a precise control over the shape of the paddle. 
it is what it is, totally based on the shape of the form body. We can try to shape the tail of the form body as much as we can, but uh, still hard to get the precise shape. And before we move on to the next method, let's color code this result in red. For the second method, let's see if we can create a paddle with a precise shape. So the idea here is to create a swim bait body without the paddle, then create a separate paddle with the desired shape, and in the end we just combine them. Here we start out from a swim bait body with a slim tail, and now let's create a separate paddle. First, we need to construct a plan where we can draw our desired paddle shape. So go to Construct, Plan at Angle, select the line that we use to cut the first paddle tail, enter 90 degrees. Now create sketch, select the target plan. This will bring you to the view where you can look at the target plan directly. If you ever move out of this view, you can use this look at shortcut at the bottom and then select the target plan. It will bring you back to that view. Once we have the direct view to the plan, we can start sketching. Here I'm using the fit point spline. I will just uh, draw one side and use mirror to create the other side. So put the first point at the center line and a few more points along the desired shape. They don't have to be perfect because we can come back and adjust. And put the last point back to the center line. Now let's adjust the spline by dragging the handles on those green tangent lines. Make sure to level the green lines on the first and last points so the mirrored path is smooth at the joints. Now go to create, mirror, select the path and the mirror line. Click OK. Now we have a complete path for the paddle. Now give the paddle some thickness. Extrude. Select the path for paddle. Say thickness 1.4. And let's make it a new body. We're going to use the geometry for the new body to do some split operation later on. New body, say OK. And now we can see there's some extra part that we need to cut off. So do split this body and select the, this face, top of the paddle. We can cut that part out first. Say OK. And this part should be gone. Now we need to cut this part. The easiest way to do this is uh, just cut the body, the, the swim bay body, using this surface. So split this guy. Splitting tool, say OK. OK, now we can discard this part. All right, so these two parts should be the complete part that we need. Say combine this, this, say OK. All right, so now we have one swim bait with the paddle tail. Now smooth out the, the joint using fillet. This part say two and add another one for this part. 0.5 looks good. Okay, there you have it. Again, it's easy to adjust the smoothness between the paddle and the tail. Just go back to the timeline and change the size of the fillet. And let's color this result yellow. 
and bring out the first result, which is red. You might have noticed that the objects move a little bit differently than before. And this is because I started to use a space mouse and it's supposed to make the moving motion smoother. But I just made the transition and I'm still trying to get used to it. So bear with me. Hope it will not make you feel dizzy. So by focusing on the paddle creation in the second method, we were able to create the exact shape for the paddle. But the transition between the tail and the paddle is the outcome of the fillet, which isn't much that we can control. So if you want to create some specific transition between the tail and the paddle, for example, some kind of a fat tail, the first method will be your better bet. Now let's look at the third method where we are going to utilize the loft feature in Fusion 360. Here we can start out from any swim bait body. So first, let's cut the tail portion. So create an offset plane. And split. Now let's bring out the desired paddle profile. Here we are going to do a loft between the tail cross section and the paddle profile. So create, loft, select tail cross section as the profile one, and both sides of the paddle as profile two. Now the loft has been created. What we need is a smooth transition from body to tail. Here we need to change the connectivity of profile 1 to tangent. There. And do a joint operation. Say OK. Alright, the transition looks pretty smooth now. Now same routine, add the thickness to the paddle using extrude and smooth out the edges using fillet. Here is the result using loft. Again you can adjust the transition by moving the split plan back and forth. For example if you push it more to the, to the end of the tail the paddle will be more pronounced, as you can see here. Adjusting the paddle angle is also straightforward. Just go back to the beginning and adjust the cut line angle. And here is where I got out of control on the space mouse way. Come back. Okay. Let's color this result in green and bring out the previous results. Let's compare. I think the second and the third results are similar in the way that we can create the exact paddle shape. But using the loft will give you a cleaner transition between the tail and the paddle. But if you don't want too much transition, you can use the second method and give a smaller fillet between the paddle and the tail. For the first method, where we just cut the tail and make it a flat paddle, we can't really have the exact paddle shape. We have to go back and forth on adjusting the pipe form in order to get closer to the desired shape. And for the third loft method, although we can't control the loft shape too much, but if we really want it, 
we can still control it by introducing more profiles between the tail cross section and the paddle profile. I will leave it to you to try it out. Finally, I'm sure there are other ways to make paddle tails. If you have a different approach and would like to share, please leave them in the comment section. Let us know which one is your favorite and let me know if you have any other requests. For now, I'm going to practice more on the space mouse. I will see you in the next one. Peace.